Uh, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Michael, for the introduction. And just uh, to start off with, uh, I agree with 95% of what Anne has said, and that's always the case with Anne. Uh, it's the 5% that I'm going to somewhat artificially uh, and hopefully provocatively uh, emphasize. And I'll start off by saying uh, city plan, a great plan, and uh, you said it yourself, it didn't actually lead to a plan. I think we've uh, thought we've had a plan, but we don't have a plan. I think the average citizen in Vancouver doesn't know they don't have a plan. And uh, as I've written, uh, we're the only municipality in the region that doesn't have a plan because the other municipalities are required to conform to provincial legislation which leads to the production of an official community plan. We're exempted from that because we're a charter city. So um, I've become somewhat, how does this click down? Oh, down. <laughs> I've become somewhat uh, better at moving through slides quickly, and uh, for an academic that's quite an achievement. So I'm going to uh, flash through some to give some suggestions about what a plan might look like based on my experience. This is one we worked with the city of North Vancouver, uh, as you know, organized around Lonsdale Street. And basically agreeing with Anne, uh, we've done a lot of work and we think it's possible to do a plan for a city. Uh, we've done it a few times, not for Vancouver, but for North Vancouver, for Surrey, in uh, not a long time. Uh, the actual community engagement can be relatively quick. It uh, requires a careful process, of course. It doesn't happen at the drawing table with a, without a whole lot of work being done in advance, such as this diagram for North Vancouver. And this set of goals and principles and objectives that inform the North Vancouver charrette. This is very typical and looks a lot like many of the documents that came out of our own Vancouver City Plan can be backed up now in our contemporary circumstances by a desire for uh, meeting sustainability objectives. This was the energy targets for the city of North Vancouver. <coughs> and has to be drawn from an actual understanding of the site itself. So this is a parcel by parcel estimation of what the energy use was, depending on where you lived in that city. <coughs> and essentialized and abstracted and put into a, a map of how neighborhoods performed, somewhat different than how places <coughs> performed. With that as a grounding, a charrette, in this case, in, in the city of North Vancouver, was executed in a number of days with stakeholders there, and showing where the new buildings would be necessary to triple the population of that city, triple the population <coughs> of that city. Uh, you would think people would go completely nuts, uh, but they didn't because we told them it's a 2050 plan, so you're all going to be dead anyway, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, and uh, visuals are very important in all of this, so when people are being asked to accept a plan, they have to, it has to be in a language they understand, which of course is how does it look now, how would it look in 15 years, and how would it look in 50 years as it comes online. By the way, those of you who think I'm anti-tower, this is evidence that I'm not always, that's not always the case. Uh, but more importantly, in terms of the broad area of the city, how do neighborhoods change? And drawing up what those gradual evolutionary changes might be, and how that would be inserted into the fabric of neighborhoods. Again, specific drawings of a specific proposal that can be turned into a zoning map that goes as far as understanding what building typologies are like. What, bi what business typologies are like, and how one-story businesses can become three-story businesses showing models. How green infrastructure can be incorporated as part of a city plan, rather than an add-on later on as a matter of policy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the green city plan in terms of wanting to do 100,000 trees, but it's basically for what? What is, the, you know, what is really the objective of that, and how does that fit into your idea about how neighborhoods fit together? And if you want bikeways, we got bikeways, right? Because this is a suggestion that in the city of North Vancouver, every other street could be turned into a green street. At that level of detail, you can see the green bands and you can see the amendments in the houses. As well as at the broad scale, how, do the, how does the new energy infrastructure 
operate specifically where is it relative to your greenhouse gas objectives and your objectives to reduce energy. So back to the plan, uh, then into what are the neighborhoods that uh, correlate with that plan, and then uh, looking at what the status quo is in terms of energy use and what does it turn into. Obviously, the greener it is, the better its performance. A plan is necessary to understand that and to get your arms around where the district heating system would go and how you would shift auto trips to bus trips and biking and walking. And at the end of the day, that's the calculation on the right-hand side. Uh, that was a 100-year plan, and the objective was to get to zero greenhouse gas, so there you go. Uh, once you've reduced it by 80%, which didn't turn out to be all that difficult, uh, with changing in building typologies gradually and ex extending the, uh, the uh, uh, district heating system, adding on the additional on-site <coughs> infrastructure for the additional 20% was not that difficult. So the remaining minute that I have, there's another situation out here which pertains to our question, and, and that's the places that do official community plans. And I want to turn your attention to Surrey's draft official community plan, which is before the council as we speak. It's a highly detailed uh, instrument, more, and as Anne's pointed out, it is a vehicle that is comprehensive and that alludes to their other plans, but also incorporates those main points from those other plans. Uh, it's very much about land use, about designating what can happen where in somewhat boring planarly terms on some pages, but in explicit diagrams on others. And even goes so far as to show how their, the fabric of their community can evolve over time. So that a cul-de-sac, which is on the left, uh, shown on the on the right uh, could evolve in time. So I'll just show one or two more examples from this before I turn it over to Peter. And even to the level of figuring out you know, how the street infrastructure will change. So I think that's enough. I'll leave it at that and uh, turn, it, turn it back to you, Michael, for Peter to get a shot at. Yeah. Yeah.